So, um, just a little background, United Community Center is um, a community center within Milwaukee, and we are located um, within the south side of Milwaukee, where there's a large Latino presence. Um, and so I'll go ahead and start with the presentation. Um, and so today we're going to define the Latino population within the United States. Um, I'd like to explain how the Latino population is impacted by opiate use disorder, um, examine some treatment considerations when we're working with the Latino population, and illustrate culturally specific uh, treatment services provided by um, the Human Services Department here at UCC. And so the U.S. Census defines Hispanics or Latinos um, as a person of Cuban, uh, Mexican, Puerto Rican, South or Central American, and other Spanish um, culture or origin. Regardless of race, uh, in this presentation, I'm going to use Hispanics and Latino interchangeably. Um, and so Latinos, um, Hispanics in the United States, there were a fast growing population, um, expanded from a small concentrated group of fewer than 6 million people in the 60s. And now there's about more than 60.6 .6 million um, Latinos in the United States, about 18.5% of the nation's population. Um, we're a diverse, multiracial, multicultural community. Um, there's a wide range of history and presence within the United States. There's different immigration reasons why Latinos are here in the United States, um, including civil wars, economic insecurity, poverty, natural disasters. Um, and that also experience um, that the reasons, the migration reasons also impacts the migration experience that Latinos experience. Um, and there's trauma related to some migration um, paths of Latinos here in the United States, which could include leaving one's country, having to acculturate to a new, um, a new country, a new language, a new uh, culture, and then living within a country um, with fear of deportation if they came here um, undocumented. And so it's important to understand that there's a wide range of why Latinos are here in the United States. It impacts um, the stressors that Latinos might be facing or experiencing and live with. Uh, regarding the opiate trends, I'm just going to give just a brief history of the opiate trends across the USA. So the rise in opioid overdoses um, can be outlined in three waves in the 1990s where there was a prescription of opiates. Um, and then in in 2010, where we had the rapid increase of overdose invol in, um, involving heroin, and then we saw the third wave in 2013, where we had significant um, overdose involving the synthetic opioids um, and fentanyl, and we're still continuing to see that. We're still continuing continuing to see uh, manufactured drugs on the street, which contain fentanyl, um, fentanyl, the counterfeit pills, and we're also seeing fentanyl and cocaine as well, and overdose, overdose deaths um, associated to that as well. Um, and as far as how is the opioid crisis affecting Latinos? Well, according to SAMHSA, the opioid uh, misuse or her heroin use or prescription opioid misuse rate among Hispanic and Latinos is similar to the national population rate, which is about 4%. Um, in 2018, 1.7 million Hispanic or Latinos and about 10.3 million people nationally, um, ages 12 and older, were estimated ha to have engaged in opioid misuse in the past year. Um, some reasons why uh, Hispanics are using opioids well, there's occupational exposures that have been associated with the use of opioid um, being prescribed pain medications. There's a higher proportion of Mexican Americans or Latinos who have blue collar manual labor jobs. Um, and then past research suggests that they experience chronic pain. Um, they could be at greater risk of experiencing widespread pain than non-Hispanic blacks and whites, making them more susceptible for multiple injuries, higher rates of disability. Another reason, um, according to SAMHSA uh, research of why uh, Latinos um, are experiencing opioid use is military service increases the risk for injury and the need for pain medications. And Hispanic and Latinos have an increasing presence in the military. They've been overrepresented among the enlisted recruits. Um, as far as substance use between 2005 and 2011, 
Latinos accounted for about 11% of ER visits initiated due to drug use, and heroin was identified as a major substance of misuse in 27% of those visits. Uh, heroin use has increased among Latino prescription opioid prescription users um, from 2008 to 2011, and research should suggest that Latinos have higher levels of risky injection drug use as compared to white and black counterparts. Social and cultural factors related to substance use among Latinos um, is self-reported discrimina discrimination associated with increased substance use among Latino adults, uh, regardless of gender. Also, family conflict um, as a result of acculturation stress can lead to increased risk among Latino youth and young adults. And so the Latino opioid users in treatment, they tend to be um, younger, less educated, more likely to have lower uh, socioeconomic status, and they are more likely to live in large urban areas. And some barriers um, include limited English proficiency, work demands, an internalized stigma around drug use, and lack of health insurance. Some system level barriers include few Spanish language speaking um, programs, and so further undocumented Latino immigrants often avoid treatment programs and other forms of health care because of their fear of their legal stat status and how it may be um, revealed to immigration authorities. Adult Latino immigrants, they're less likely to seek out treatment for fear of deport, uh, deportate, I'm sorry, deportation, discrimination. It places them at a higher risk for overdose, and Latinos are less likely to remain in treatment. And they're there for shorter periods. So overall, generally Latinos do receive fewer services because of this. Um, there's also an increased unemployment, housing instability also decreases the rate of treatment completion. Uh, we kind of discussed, I know there was a discussion like other um, Spanish peer supports and just Spanish speaking services. So there is a shortage of behavioral health practitioners who are culturally, linguistically, um, responsive to Latinos and opioid use is more likely to be criminalized among Latinos compared to whites. And that also results in higher rates of incarceration. So those are all issues that are impacting Latinos when it comes to opioid use disorders. And so as far as treatment considerations, when we are working with Latinos, there's several um, concepts to keep in mind with working with Latinos. Uh, one is um, personalismo, which is personalism, and it's a formal friendliness. Um, it's an emphasis on um, personal relationships. Latino people are people oriented and they come from a collectivist uh, society and culture. So it's good that we're establishing a good report with clients, um, that we're taking a few extra moments when we're meeting with them. Um, though to just connect with them and see how they're doing personally, those few moments can, um, they can, they have, those small efforts can go a really long way in building rapport with Latinos. It's uh, appropriate to begin a session with Latinos having just a polite conversation on personal matters um, before you begin at the task at hand. Um, it helps Latinos to feel comfortable. Um, and then also listening to Latinos too as well carefully when they're speaking and to just really pay attention to what they're saying um, to allow them to feel that you're paying attention that you're um, engaged. Otherwise, you know, you don't want to appear disengaged or not interested. Um, and for us, another concept is familismo. Familismo is uh, the importance of family and family roles. It em emphasizes the critical role of internal family dynamics. Uh, we include extended social networks and then also um, familismo. It just emphasizes the distribution of our resources through all of these networks. So we involve, you know, just more than just the, you know, nuclear family, we involve extended family. There's aunts, there's uncles, there's family, friends. And so it's important in prevention, treatment, and in recovery approaches that you're using this entire social support system and family members when working with Latinos. Another concept in working with Latinos is respeto, respect. Um, so in the, and this is not, this is just general, not in every single Latino culture, because as I mentioned, uh, Latinos are a group of multiracial, you know, um, people from different countries. 
But one concept is the respectful respect and um, it's people are expected to defer to those who are in a position of authority, um, authority regarding their age, regarding their gender, their social position, their title, their economic status. And so it's just important to recognize that um, that is a concept in working with Latinos in order to improve communication with clients and their families um, when providing services. Um, avoid using family members or friends to do the interpretation. Try to use uh, trained uh, interpreters and also using um, appropriate terms for um, cultural terms, such as we use a lot like senor, senora um, for older adults. Um, and so that, that's a term of respect. Um, and so just showing that respect in your interactions and sessions with Latinos. Another concept to talk about is confianza, confianza, trust. And um, when clients feel there's confianza, when they feel like they can trust their um, uh, clinician, they, they value the time they spend talking to their health providers, and they tend to take um, the um, suggestions of providers when they feel that they can trust. And so it's important that when you're providing services that your um, services are culturally informed, they're culturally effective. Um, and uh, a client who feels valued as a partner in recovery will reciprocate the trust and openness and involvement far better than someone who's fearful, reluctant to disclose information or who's um, stigmatized. Another concept to take into consideration is spirituality, um, spiritualidad. And so it's important that you take in consideration that Latino clients may combine their respect for the benefits of mainstream medicine tradition and traditional healing with a strong religious component. Um, spirituality or religion beliefs um, may provide foundation to build on recovery. It's recommended that providers acknowledge that patients believe, um, they acknowledge the patient's beliefs, they ask about practices and how they're um, experienced and they respect and understand that this view can provide um, benefits to treating, communicating, and building trust within the client. Um, trusted primary care providers also play an important role in the prevention of opioid dependence um, by using screening to identify during regular visits, discussing the importance of behavioral health services with Latino patients who might be unwilling to seek out these um, services due to their own stigma, and um, be mindful of barriers related to engagements and adherence to medication assisted treatments. Thoroughly explain the medication, the benefits, engage family members in prevention and treatment when appropriate, and adapt intervention and treatment modalities to meet cultural and linguistic needs. I'm going to talk a little bit about our services here at UCC um, and what we provide to meet opioid use disorder treatment. We have a residential facility. We provide day treatment and outpatient for substance use disorders. We have an entire continuum of um, substance use disorder treatment. We also have a mental health outpatient um, clinic here as well. We, uh, we provide a co-occurring approach, which is important when we're with working with Latinos. We know that you know many of them have experienced trauma or have anxiety or depression due to their experiences. Um, we provide culturally competent, language specific, gender and trauma responsive care. Um, we also have a family focused approach, which is really important working with Latinos um, because as I mentioned earlier, they have the concept of familismo. Um, we have alumni groups um, where we bring in clients who've been successful to come continue working and host events, recovery events for clients. That's been impacted because of COVID, so we've been limited um, with COVID restrictions, but hopefully, you know, we'll get those back and running um, in the future the way we used to before. Um, so we have a residential treatment facility. We have, let's see if it's on my other slides. I'll get a little bit into about our residential treatment facility in a few minutes or in a minute or two, but we're one of four Milwaukee of, we're one of four residential treatment facilities in Milwaukee County. Um, and we're one of two that accept pregnant postpartum women and we accept mothers with their children up to the age of 10 into treatment. Um, we have, again, a, continu a complete continuum of care for both men and women. Um, so residential people are able to start at residential and step down to day treatment outpatient 
Or if we're able to get to someone, um, if we're able to have someone just engage in outpatient treatment and they're requiring a higher level of care, we could then step them up working with them um, to meet the level of care that they need for their opiate use disorder. Um, again, our services are cultural and linguistically appropriate. Um, we do have a partnership with 16th Street Community Health Center here in Milwaukee. Um, it is a federally qualified health center um, for our clients. So if they come into our facility and they don't have primary health care set up, we can um, help them connect with the PCP. And we also have recovery support services, including case management um, for people in recovery. And we have peer supports here in our residential treatment facility um, who are able to provide groups and individual sessions with clients while in residential. Our residential capacity includes 16 male beds and we have 32 female beds. Again, with the female beds, women can bring their children into treatment with them. So our capacity does change at times, um, depending how many children we have in the facility um, and if we need to convert. Uh, we do have family suites. Um, so depending on how many children the woman has, we can accommodate them within our family suites. Again, we, we, we refer to a primary health care because we know that's important for our clients. We have prenatal care. So clients um, are, we have coordination with prenatal care. We do have an on-site APMP who is able to meet with clients and sh um, she's able to provide medication assisted treatment. Um, if clients are on methadone, we collaborate um, with, if they come already on methadone, we collaborate and ensure that they can continue with their methadone while in our residential treatment facility. And we do provide orientation ed education to medication assisted treatments once clients are in our facility, we make referrals are as appropriate and as needed. Um, if anyone has any questions, I did include my email and my uh, phone number to be contacted, but I'll also allow, I think I have time now to take any questions if anyone has.